Yeah, even if you've never seen he was still movie, alive yeah. when he was still yeah. alive. Come on, ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like the 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 Stetson. Uh, like always reminds me of speaking of Seinfeld, the Urban Sombrero. Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Peterman's the greatest. The Urban Sombrero. <laughs> Uh, oh man! I actually got a cameo from the guy who played uh, Peterman uh, for my mom for her birthday a few years ago. <laughs> oh, did you? Yeah, okay. yeah. It was awesome. He did like a whole five minute bit. It was it was fantastic. Did he do it like uh, as Peterman or? That's as, what I, uh, I mean. That's what I sort of asked him to do. I was like, hey, you know, because it was uh, it was in 2020. It was when everybody was still isolating because her birthday's in July, uh, and everybody's yeah, still isolating. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, you know, could you do a little like greeting about maybe being isolated? And he told a story about you know floating down some river in India <laughs> or something. <laughs> That's awesome. It was great. It was awesome. I loved it. So, uh, so the cameos can be fun. Actually, I was, I was, I, I looked into doing one for the show. Uh, we had the, we, we had the, uh, the one from, um, uh, uh, Ned, oh, uh, Ned Ryerson where he mentioned yeah, the yeah. show, but, uh, but I looked into getting one from like one of the characters on the show. And one of the rules is that they won't endorse something. So they won't, they wouldn't, they wouldn't like talk about the podcast and how great it is or anything like that. So I was like, oh, uh, sorry, I don't want that. <laughs> Unless they're going to lie. I don't want it. Uh, there was no way to do it, make it like, uh, like have them talk around it or anything like that. I, I, I didn't, I didn't that. look into it that much. And, and, and the, uh, the, the, communication with the celebrities is like you're limited to like 200 characters or something like that. It's a very, very small sort of description. You can give them on what you want. So, oh, yeah. so it would have been a little tricky, but <clears throat> excuse me. But anyway, so, uh, so there's this, you know, they have this encounter Boone walk, Boone eventually walks away. There's several more encounters with Boone and Raylan coming. Um, uh, one of the things I really liked about this scene inside the portal is how Catherine had to pretend to not know Boyd and Ava and Boyd and Ava had to pretend to not know Catherine. But at one point when Avery has his back turned, he, she's got this little toast that she, <laughs> that she makes the yeah. point across the room. <laughs> That's I'm right. Like, that seems kind of dangerous, but I do like, I, I, I love that justified does things like this. And, and the reason I like it is because it, they trust the audience, right? They know that the audience is smart enough to know that we don't need to see the meeting between Catherine Hale and Boyd Crowder, where they say, Hey, we have to remember, we don't know each other at this thing. So we can't talk to each other there. They don't need to show that meeting to remind the audience, right? Because criminals wouldn't have that meeting. They would know not to talk to each other there, but yeah. a lot of lesser shows would show a phone call or a meeting between them saying, Hey, we're both going to be in the same place. We got to remember, we don't know each other. And, yeah. uh, and I appreciate that the writers appreciate the intelligence of the audience and don't feel the need to spoon feed us here. So, so, so good on the writers here. But I, I did, I did like the attention to detail there that, uh, that, Oh, they're going to be all in the same place. That's going to be awkward. So, <laughs> <laughs> but uh we get more speechifying we get uh we get markham who makes a little speech uh appealing to the people of harlan as friends and neighbors he uh he tells them that you know hey look uh i'm just trying to make your dreams come true while i'm trying to make my dreams come true we can all do this together you'll get more money than you'll ever you know ever be able to spend you'll change your life and i'll get to grow pot and um uh, and he opens up the floor insanely. He sees Boyd Crowder and opens the floor and says, Boyd, do you have something to say, basically? And, you know, obviously he doesn't know Boyd very well because, yeah, Boyd does have something to say. Let's, uh, let's listen. <laughs> well, not at all, Mr. Markham. You throw a hell of a party. I'm enjoying myself immensely. Although I am curious, do you plan on doing to this small town... The same thing that you did to all those other small towns in Colorado. Everybody knows I think dope is a fine commodity, legal or otherwise. But the people in this room need the money earned in their community to stay in their community. I don't claim to be a savior, 
but I have already demonstrated my willingness to put my money to work in this community. And as I understand it, where I offered cash, you offered threats. Got your plan? Keep harmony as good people for your own gain? As far as I know, everyone Boyd spoke to is at least still alive. Unlike Betty and John O. Hutchins. And I don't think I see Red Crowl at this shindig either. Huh. Maybe your pizza oven scared him away. Heard tell he's skittish around fire since his place burned to the ground. Property you now own, if I ain't mistaken. I'm afraid teenage gossip clattered your mind, Miss McCready. Well, could be. I am still a touch spooked by the decapitated snake you put in my house. See you pointing fingers but not offering a fix to any of these people's problems. My fix is the same as yours, Mr. Markham. Promise of legal weed. But the difference is, is I've been here for generations. You all knew my daddy? You all know me? Know that I'm Harlan through and through. And so is my partner. And who might that be? The only other soul I know cares about this place as much as I do. Boyd Crowder. Every one of you who has been approached about your property, this is my offer. I will give you cash for your land, same as Markham. But the difference is, I don't want to move you guys out. Just want to move some seed in. And along with that seed, we bring security and protection now and in perpetuity. Hire the locals to help with the farming. Pay it back. You think Avery Markham and his city mouse said ain't gonna cut and run, win or lose? <laughs> she look like Harlan to you? <laughs> Throw in with me and we'll make Harlan prosperous our own selves. Give this county back to the people the way we all know it should be. Right. <laughs> I, I love Loretta just taking a page right out of Boyd's book here. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, I was going to say my note was uh, that it's very similar to Mags Bennett. Yep. As far as because uh, she was at that was she at that meeting way back when? I don't know if two? I don't remember. I was thinking about that. I don't remember if Loretta uh, was at that meeting or not. Uh, the the public forum meeting with the the coal company. Yeah. Uh, yeah, where Boyd yeah. gets up and and makes his big speech, and Mags makes her big speech, and yeah, it's uh, I don't know, I don't know if Loretta was there, but uh, but she clearly, if she wasn't, she watched it after the fact because <laughs> it basically is the same story. I mean, it plays it's, out the same way. Yeah, yeah, and it's the appeal to oh, you know, local, you know, the the yeah. outsiders coming in, yep. and yeah, and, in and, fact, you know, it's about the same thing. Give me your land; you can trust me with it. And now you can't trust these outsiders. You can't trust these other people. Yeah, so. yeah. Same pitch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> same pitch. It's wild. I do. I do like the parallels that they draw, and 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 showing Loretta becoming a little mini Mags Bennett is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and I'm wondering because I don't. Did, w well, I guess they, they did hire Boyd to kind of like uh, influence people in the over there. <laughs> yes. Um, back, the coal company I'm talking about, yeah. um, uh, way back when. But uh, you know, they did they did Boyd murder anybody? No. Uh, no. no. Okay. Well. No, no. But he did threaten people when when he realized oh, yeah. he was going to uh, he was going to try and screw them over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he did basically the same exact uh, strategy that they're doing here. <laughs> it is, you know, it is funny. At like, you know, if you look at it, it looks actually kind of repetitive. <laughs> it did, totally, dig yeah. Into it, yeah. But but it's such a it's such a compelling sort of presentation and story that you don't care. You really don't care. Hey, they're yeah. rehashing sort of the same plot line. Eh. Yeah, you know what? It's it's different enough, and the characters and the acting are compelling enough that I don't care. So that and it's always it's going to be a constant thing. It's always going to somebody's going to have something that they you know, and it depends on how motivated somebody is to what they're going to throw behind it yep. as far as the resources to get, to get what they want. So always rich yeah. people looking to plunder poor people. That's that's. You know, that, that's a universal truth that's always going to happen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Uh, all right. So, so Boyd, after that, uh, after that little speech coming from her, he confronts her for being a little unsubtle, which I thought was a hilarious coming from him. Uh, he's like, I, I don't remember oh, I exactly what he says, but it's just so funny. Like, like critiquing her for doing something that he would have absolutely done. Yeah. And, uh, but and he, he does admire like... her, her balls. Everybody does. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. I, my note here is that, oh, I'm ready for my close up, Mr. Whatever that, you know, like that's Boyd. Oh, it's yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Where, where's the camera again? Which, which, where do I need to look? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Boyd heads out to the mine. Uh, Catherine encourages Markham to deal with her Loretta, to deal with the Loretta problem. <laughs> She's like, yeah, you're going to have to do something about her. And uh, he tells Boone to investigate whether she has family so they can start to figure out if they're going to kill her. And if, if they are, is somebody else going to get the property that they're going to have to kill? Um, but while this is all happening, Raylan is talking to Ava and makes a comment about how she's dressed. Uh, eventually uh, she figures out that he already knows that the, the robbery is going down today. Cause you know, he, you know, orchestrated it essentially. And, uh, but she doesn't figure out that he's got win working for him. Uh, and, and then she leaves to do her, her little, uh, duty, which is to start a fire essentially that gets everybody out of the building. <laughs> uh, Boyd, Zachariah, Carl, and Duffy are all down in the mine. Duffy's down there in his suit, which is hilarious. <laughs> And uh, uh, they look over the explosives and, and Boyd's like, all right, let's go. Uh, he tells Carl and Duffy to get out. They tells Ava to pull the alarm to empty the building. And right as they light the explosive, uh, Zachariah hits Boyd and chains him to the wall of the mine. And uh, he's sitting there looking at the, the dynamite uh, fuse burning literally in front of him. And so I wondered about this. Do you remember when you watched this for the first time? Were you thinking to yourself, oh, holy shit, they're going to kill Boyd four episodes before the end? No, no. I didn't think that at all. You didn't actually. think of it at all? You thought it was just a no, misdirect? No, no. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think I was so like, I think, well, I was thinking, God, do they still do that? Like, do they still detonate using dynamite with like lighting a match? And there's this fuse that they, like it's an old timey uh, mining trick that they haven't changed for a couple hundred years. You know? Oh yeah, I think I think uh, well, I mean, I think professional mining <laughs> operations use uh, use synthetic explosive <laughs> and everything else, like like debt cord and all that stuff. Now. Yeah, yeah. But when you when you have access to dynamite only, uh, that's how you that's how you blow up dynamite is is a fuse with a fire, right? Or you can shoot it. Uh, that you works too. It, yeah. yeah. But yeah. Uh, but fire and a, fire and a fuse is what sets off dynamite. It's not an electric. It's not like C four where you need an electrical charge. It's a uh, it's actual fire. <laughs> just, like because uh, we we uh, we got hoodwinked before with the uh, not really hoodwinked, but it was like I forgot one of the uh, one of the villains of the week uh, in previous a previous season where he had the uh, he had the fire the road flares. Oh yeah. That- <laughs> yeah, road flares. <laughs> yes, yeah. I do remember. Yes. Uh what was that? That was um I can't even remember. Oh, I just know shoot. what happened. <laughs> I don't remember either. Yeah, but I do remember the road flares. Yeah. Because I, I remember I used the clip from uh from Tommy Boy. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> road flares. Do you eat a lot of paint chips as a kid? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. They should have just used the like a like <laughs> like one of those cartoon bombs. Yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> like they have the, at the TSA checkpoints with the, the big <laughs> black ball with the fuse sticking out of the top. Yeah. That cracks me up every time I see it at TSA. Know why it does too. It does too <laughs> it's like I'll be sure to tell Wiley Coyote he's not gonna make it through security. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so with seconds to spare, so I, I will, I will tell you that I absolutely did when I watched this episode for the first time, I was like, Oh, isn't that interesting? They're going to kill Boyd off before the end of the show. Ava's going to be on her own to figure out what the hell she does next. And, uh, and we're going to see Boone and Markham and Raylan kind of square off to end the series. I thought, 
that's interesting. That's less interesting than Boyd, but it is interesting. And then they, they, you know, with seconds to spare, Carl comes to the rescue, brings him a rock hammer, and Boyd manages to smash through the chain in like what four strokes or whatever, yeah, which I, I don't I think is possible <laughs> given the size and and uh, uh, thickness. 